All right, so we want to look now at some properties of continuous functions. Now, um, to start with, here are kind of the, among all functions that we might consider, the best behaved functions, okay? So polynomial functions, any polynomial function, is continuous for all real numbers, right? So this, is, this amounts to saying that we can take the limit of any polynomial at any point by just plugging in the number. And we saw that back when we looked at analytic methods for limits, right? And we saw that as well for sine and cosine. We saw it for the exponential function. Well, okay, we didn't actually see it for the exponential function, but you can take my word for it on that one. The exponential function is also continuous everywhere. Um, Now, um, the other functions we're used to, well, they might not be continuous everywhere, but they are continuous on their domains, okay? So the ones that are continuous on their domains would be any rational function, right? So any ratio of two polynomials. It's going to be continuous everywhere except for zeros in the denominator any root function, right? As usual, you gotta stay away from negative values under even roots, otherwise gonna be continuous. And the natural logarithm is continuous on its domain, so as long as x is positive, it's gonna be continuous at every positive x value, right? Um, and, and also the other trig functions, right? Um, so tan x, cotan x, secant x, cosecant x, okay? So basically all the functions that you know, all the functions that you're used to are continuous everywhere that they're defined. And, and because of this, a lot of people find continuity sort of a strange topic and, 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 or, or for that matter, limits as a strange topic, right? Because continuity is, is this property that you can just evaluate a limit by plugging in the number. And so when you first look at limits for common functions, you realize, well, all we're doing here is plugging in the numbers. Why am I even bothering to do this, right? Um, and then eventually you look at these examples like zero over zero, you know, the, these indeterminate forms where, okay, yes, I guess we do need the limits to understand these things. Um, but, you know, continuity is, you know, it's a useful property, right? The reason why all the functions that we're used to are continuous is that having continuous functions is very useful. If you're doing applications, if you're doing modeling, right, um, a lot of this sort of real world behavior that we model, we tend to model with continuous functions, right? Um, the other reason is that continuous functions are, relatively speaking, well behaved, right? Functions with discontinuities are harder to handle, they're harder to deal with. Um, and most of the time we want to work with functions that we can manipulate, that we can understand, that we can work with. So, yeah, it makes sense that, uh, that most of the functions we deal with are continuous. Uh, now, the other good news is that we can combine functions. Okay, so if, uh, if f and g are, are continuous. And I'm, I'm being a little bit lazy here about saying where they're continuous. Continuous at, at appropriate points or on appropriate intervals. But if f and g are continuous, so will be f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f divided by g. Um, as long as we stick to points where g of x is not equal to zero. Um, so powers, roots, um, and composition as well, f composed with g. Uh, so the result for compositions actually would say that if, um, and maybe we should state this one more carefully, if, uh, if g is continuous at c, and f is continuous at g of c, then f composed with g 
will be continuous at C. Okay? So composition of continuous functions is continuous. And that means that you can now build lots of interesting examples of continuous functions, and we'll look at a couple of them in the next video.